sank. I saw just driving up the road when I saw the, you know, the, the severity of the burn. I had no idea it was quite at that level. Um, I was able to access the resort with a pass that I had through the fire department, and I was able to get in. And while it was literally still on fire, there were still active flames. Uh, took a ride down to the West Bowl and saw just the brunt of how the damage came through. I was shocked to see that our buildings, most of our wooden buildings were still standing, but when I saw the damage to the forest, it, it hurt my heart. It was terrifying. We had already left Tahoe like maybe a week prior because it was so smoky and so gnarly there. And when we got like the emergency alert to evacuate, it just is like honestly one of the worst feelings I've ever had. I mean, right after the fire had gone through Sierra, I mean, I was watching the webcams like crazy and just could, up all night just monitoring the fire and just and when I knew it was hitting Sierra I was just devastated and didn't know what to think and didn't know if this would change you know Tahoe as a whole even if it didn't make it to the basin for me so much of my life in Tahoe you know revolves around this mountain I wasn't sure what that meant for my life and my family's life What that fire didn't burn was that special feeling of connectivity that people have with such a great place, their love affair with the mountain. When people talk about Sierra, they, they, they talk about how much they love it, not they like it, as I mentioned earlier, and it, it's the beauty of this resort. And it goes back to the roots and the foundation that was built long ago. just say I started skiing here in 72 um, and pretty much by myself but what's interesting about Sierra Tahoe is you can come by yourself but you're not going to ski by yourself for very long. And two gentlemen that I have um, often skied with um, would uh, would go on the chairs with me and we'd talk about various things and one day one of the members um, described the fact that he thought that his family had done him wrong by not securing season passes for his life. Um, and I'm going, well, yeah, um, that would be nice for all of us to have. He goes, no, but my parents own the resort and should have negotiated a deal for all of us siblings to have free season passes. And I'm going, well, you're not a sprock. That's the family I knew that owned the um, Sierra Ski Ranch, and he goes, no, my family built the resort before the Sprocks. I'm a Barrett, and I'm going, well, I know you're a Barrett, but I never knew the Barretts, who the Barretts were and, and what the story was. Someone should say or tell that story. And he goes, well, yeah, I think we should get together and, and, and talk about that. Together, they believed also that it would be fun to create a ski resort for family and friends to enjoy along with um, others. And so members of the ski club, together with the Barretts, would actually come on the weekends and cut trees down and create the resort. So all that came together, this whole symbiotic family thing, extended and real, came together to create the first Sierra Ski Ranch. And the Barretts, when they first started the resort, had that. It was not only the four Barretts themselves as a physical family, but they enlisted all of their friends and neighbors who came to work as a virtual family to make the resort what it was. And you see that same type of thing here today in Sierra Tahoe. This sense of family is everywhere. Sierra Tahoe isn't your classic environment that you would see at other resorts. 
it's very much a family community mountain and I think that's what makes Sierra so special. The biggest loss for me was probably the fact that we couldn't bring our 600 employees back to work last winter because we built such a great team of folks and that we really count on them and they count on this as their place to work and Sierra really was a place of healing for a lot of people and that was absent and the other hard part was knowing that this whole winter we had a skeleton crew just working on getting the resort kind of repaired and understanding the losses that there weren't there was no life, there weren't people, there, weren't, there wasn't music, you didn't see the dogs chasing the frisbees, you didn't smell the smells and hear the music and, and, and watch people walking around with their equipment. Missed that, missed all that excitement. Uh, you can see in the summer, it looks a lot different than it will in the winter. You'll notice where some of the trees have been cut near the chair line to protect those chairs. And again, it'll look a little different this winter, but there's still a lot of beauty to be found here. And again, this has become a beach in the winter where people love to get some sun and hear some music and have a cold beer or a hot dog or whatever they want to do, hang out with their friends. So while the Barretts actually created Sierra Ski Ranch, it was probably the Sprock family that actually were the most responsible for making it from going from ranch to resort. A phenomenal period of 40 years. And eventually, it was time for the transition between the Sprock family and the Barretts to take over, and we had a new era for Sierra Ski Ranch. went to Sierra at Tahoe when I was nine years old. I remember vividly how excited I was to go snowboarding for the first time. Um, my family signed me up for Wild Mountain and I was just so excited to go play on the mountain. Back in those days, Ski Patrol would pull people over for jumping and if you were building a jump, they'd pull your ticket. And here we are now building jumps. So pretty big change for the industry, um, but I was an advocate of it early on. And when I came up here in 93, there was a lot of interest in that and not a lot had been done around the lake. And so we sort of put a flag in the snow and said, we're gonna own this. And we built, we built some terrain that never had been seen before in this region. And we created a playground and a place for people to progress their skills. Three gold medalists, how could that happen? Well, you have the right playground, you had the train features for them to practice and learn on, the half pipe, as well as the, the rest of the natural uh, attributes of this mountain that lend itself to this. But the sculpted terrain took us to the next level. I feel like the parks at Sierra are honestly top notch. They're just so fun, the whole circuit. Sierra is definitely where I fell in love with riding park. It was legit my medicine and still is. This year I'm probably more excited to ride it than ever because I mean there's tons of new lines and uh, with some of the trees being gone in West Bowl, it's unlocked a lot of terrain. Growing up Sierra always had my back during injuries, during travels and being super broke and not really having money to pursue my snowboard career. They always were kind of there for me and believed in not just me, but my family, the other local athletes. And I have just so much deep appreciation for Sierra.
Uh, this is a beautiful mountain and it's an incredible location. But if you take away, you know, all the lifts and everything else, it's the people that bring it to life. And so um, what we've tried to do and we still do today is we continue to build on that. Keep people focused first, be very focused on what our guests need and want, make sure that we anticipate and deliver to those folks and keep those traditions alive because so important today in a world that's just lost its compass to have something to kind of come back to that matters. Probably one of the most amazing events I remember from Sierra at Tahoe growing up was boarding for breast cancer. It was such an amazing event, um, educational, music, just celebration, and it was the best. Like people still flash back of like Blink-182 playing, crowd surfing. It's gonna be different, the landscape will change, but you know what, it's gonna open things up. There's gonna be new places to go you couldn't go before. The snow may move a little differently, the wind may blow a little different, but at the end of the day, uh, the lifts will be turning, people will be smiling. People really do have a love affair with this mountain and they don't feel like they're guest number 365. They are part of our family. When we all come together in the pub or on the plaza, it's like going to the beach and it's like walking down the plaza and saying hi to all your friends and kids running all over the place and music's playing. And it's just, it's a special place. Um, and again, that will never leave. That'll be part of our culture as long as I'm here, as long as we can carry this forward.